Salita with Filehouse Capel Tribal Council, the diabetes team. And I'm Janet Muirhead. I'm with the Canada Prenatal Nutrition Program. Today we're going to make Change Your Life Chicken. So it's a mixture of some root vegetables, some uh, vegetables that are currently in season like parsnips, potatoes, carrots, sweet potato, Brussels sprouts and onions. And we're going to throw it all together with some chicken thighs with the skin on and bake it at a really high temperature at 500 degrees. And then we'll show you how it turns out and we wish you could taste it. <laughs> Okay, so Janet and I are going to show you how to um, cut some of these vegetables and we've pre-washed them and pre-washed our hands here. So we're not even going to peel the carrots or the parsnips, but we, we washed them really well. The skin, we kept it on for some fiber and some additional nutrients. So I'm basically just going to cut the top of the carrot off here and that's kind of the only part that we're not going to keep. And then I'm just going to slice it pretty thinly. These are the, the carrots are the ones that um, might take a little bit longer to cook out of all of these. And the parsnips, so we're going to make some thinner slices. And then I'll let Janet take it away with the parsnips while I finish up with the carrots. So parsnips, if you haven't had them before, they look like a white carrot and they're actually really sweet. A lot of people think they're going to taste kind of like a turnip, but I would say they're more like a carrot. And I don't bother peeling them either. And kind of at the thinner bottom, I leave them in bigger chunks and then as I get up to the big fat part at the top, I'm going to start cutting them more thinly. Sometimes at the top even, I'll then cut them in half like this. It's a little bit easier too because it's not rolling away on you then. And we have our tray all ready here because this is all we need. Um, Pile it up on our tray. One of the things I love about this recipe is how little dishes there are to do after. All right. Next, I think I'm going to do an onion. And Janet will show you her knife cutting skills with a sweet potato. This is all for the onion. I like to leave this the skin on and cut each end off and then cut it in half and so that makes it a little bit easier to take the skin off because sometimes it can be hard to, to, to get off when the onion is full. So I'll move all of the skin out of the way. We need our onion cutting goggles here. Okay, so how I like to do this one is I like to look and see where the, the core is and have that facing away from me. And then if you see these ridges, you can kind of see there's some lines in the onion. And so I like to cut about three quarters of the way up in little strips all the way across using those Lines is kind of a guide, a little bit of a guide. And once you have all of your lines done, then you just cut horizontally. And that is my quick and easy onion trick. Do you find, Talita, when you cut them that small, do they get overcooked on your tray? Yes, they definitely could. So what I, can I show you how I do mine when I do yes. this recipe? I actually only do about three cuts the long way and about four this way. 
So because we have our oven at such a high temperature, a bigger onion will uh, take longer to cook and be less likely to char up and get um, burnt in crispy. So um, the edges might still, but then the inside will be um, just softened. So as you try a recipe like this, you'll find your own favorite ways of doing things. I find I like leaving things in bigger chunks the mm. way they cook at such a high heat, but you might like cutting your small and that's totally fine too. All right. So our tray is going to be getting really full here. So I'm only going to use about half of this sweet potato. This is one that I always do peel. So with the extra, if you have a little baby at home, it's great. You could just boil up the rest of it and have some baby food ready to go. What else would you do with leftover sweet potatoes, Lita? I really like mine roasted or kind of, um, you can pan fry it kind of like you would a potato. And I like mine with some eggs. Sometimes I've grated it with a grater and then thrown it into scrambled eggs. Mm. All right. So that's all I'm gonna do for the sweet potato. I probably usually give it a rinse here. And then again, how big you cut is gonna depend on your personal preference. I'm gonna leave it fairly chunky. That's about all I do. What's next? Okay, so I'm gonna give Janet a couple of potatoes here. And I am going to do some Brussels sprouts. And I really like Brussels sprouts in this recipe because they give it really good color and flavor. And this one is quite easy. I'm just going to cut the stem end off and then I'm gonna leave them whole. Actually, you could cut them, uh, you could have them either way, vertically or um, through the middle here but I'm just going to leave them whole today. And then if any of the leaves come off while you're cutting, you can sprinkle those on the cutting board as well. And potatoes, super easy. We've already washed these. Um, we leave the peel on because there's lots of good nutrition there and it saves that step of peeling. And I find them really delicious. Same thing, I'm gonna leave these in pretty big chunks. So we've shown you a lot of vegetables today, just to show you all of the possibilities and not even all of them, there, you can use many more, but um, an easy way to do it is just using what you have in your house. And um, especially now when we're limiting our trips to the grocery store, so you might just have onions, potatoes, and carrots at home, and that, those are totally fine for this recipe. Some other really good ones are green beans, asparagus, cauliflower. Ones that aren't as recommended are like softer ones like zucchini or mushrooms. They're gonna tend to get a little bit more overdone. And they'll make it, they won't let it brown as much because they'll release too much liquid. So while I finish chopping the vegetables here, Janet is going to show you how you prepare the chicken for this recipe. And it might be a little bit different from what you're used to. So one of the tips in this recipe is to season under the skin. I wasn't sure it was going to be worth it, but I would have to say it is just delicious. I think it is worth that extra step. So there's lots of different things you could add to your seasoning. We are just doing salt and pepper today, but some other good choices would be oregano or thyme. Um, what were some other ones we talked about? Um, rosemary. rosemary. Yeah. yeah. I find that salt and pepper tastes really good with this recipe, but if you were um, wanting to do more of a taco kind of seasoning, you could use chili powder and cumin. Um, I was thinking oregano and a little bit of seasoned salt with 
Um, maybe at the end, some lemon juice would give it more of a Greek flavor. So the possibilities are endless with this recipe. So I'm pulling back the skin. There's usually one side where the skin comes off a little bit easier than another, I find. I'm just kind of opening it up, pulling it back a little bit. And I like having it, whatever seasoning I'm putting into a bowl, so I'm not trying to grab another container and getting it all gooed up. Make sure to season underneath too. So at first when I read this recipe, I was a little bit intimidated. But it is quite easy, as Janet's showing you, it, it lifts off really nicely. So um, it's, you don't have to be intimidated by it. And, um, and yeah, just make a little, a little opening for your, your salt and pepper or the seasonings that you're using. Because we do leave the skin on for this recipe, it does have um, a little bit extra fat, a little bit extra calories. So this might be a meal that you choose to do some of the time um, versus a most of the time. But one thing I really liked about this recipe is that once you get all this chopping done, um, that's all of the hands-on time that you need. So when we pop it into the oven at 500 degrees, um, then it just has to cook for an hour. So you can spend that extra hour spending time with your family, um, doing anything else around the house that you need to get done. And then um, you have a pretty complete meal here when, when it's all finished. Um, you might, to lighten it up a little bit, you might want to um, have one serving of the chicken and the vegetables and then add some raw vegetables or a salad on the side, but that's totally up to you and depending on what you have at home. So to finish it up, we're gonna add a little, we have olive oil. It is one that I enjoy a lot with this, but I've used canola oil is also great. Um, have you tried it with any other? I used olive oil. I used olive oil. Yeah. Um, you could use any sort of vegetable oil that you have at home, um, corn oil, if you had. I don't have a specific amount. It's going to depend on how many vegetables you chopped up, but just drizzle enough so that when you stir it all up, they're lightly coated. Again, we could use different seasonings like oregano on this, but we're going to just do salt and pepper. So you do want your tray to be quite full of vegetables. If you were making this for only a few people, you might want to use a smaller tray or even like just a small um, tin foil pan. I think Talita has that to show here. Something like that would work too. And these are really good, like Janet said, if you're making a smaller batch, if you don't have as many people to feed, um, but also it doesn't stick in this kind of a pan. So that makes it nice, but if you don't have one of these or you don't have any foil, you can just do it right on a cookie sheet or any um, oven safe pan that you have. I have tried this without the tin foil and parchment paper that I have lining this tray. Um, it works quite fine. It's nicer to use this to not have to do cleaning your pan after, just throw out the tin foil. I wouldn't do it, I don't think, just with tin foil because it's going to get cooked at 500 for a while and it's going to be hard because it's going to stick to the tin foil, hey? I did just use tin foil when I made this at home. Oh, okay. um, and it does stick quite a bit. It's kind of like if you've ever made um, vegetables in tin foil on a barbecue. Um, but lots of people enjoy that flavor that it gets that little bit of charred. So yeah, I, anything that you've got, I think at home. And then we're gonna just nestle the chicken on top. And this is gonna um, really give your vegetables lots of nice flavor because the fat just, you know, soaks right into those potatoes. Um, if your tray is not full like this, you might find that it will burn a little bit. So use a smaller tray if you need to. Oh, how does that look? Very colorful and beautiful. We know there's lots of nutrients in there. Every vegetable that has a different color has 
different nutrients and so um, we are getting lots of filling power and nutrition from those veggies. Um, we have preheated the oven to 500 degrees and I know that sounds really hot um, but it's just the right temperature to crisp up the veggies and the chicken skin as well. So we're gonna pop it in there for about 50 minutes and then we'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So here we are, um, it's done, it's tender uh, with the fork, and it's got some really nice browning, um, which really actually sweetens up the vegetables. So sometimes um, parents comment that kids aren't the biggest fan of vegetables. This is another really great way to try vegetables roasted um, because of the sweetness that that browning does. So it's not burnt, just nice and brown, um, and the chicken skin is nice and crispy, it's just delicious. Thank you so much for cooking with us and watching. And we want to give credit to the Lazy Genius Connective. That's where we got the Change Your Life chicken recipe. And um, we found that it has such easy instructions. You don't need very much for equipment or ingredients. You can use whatever you have at home. And that was, was, that's what was really appealing about it. So we want to give credit to them. Another variation on this recipe that I have done in the past, very similar, but I would use sausage instead of chicken. Yeah, That's another idea. Delicious. And if you want to contact us at all, you can contact the dietitians at FHQ with the First Nations Health Services. Thanks.